106.9 Uyo. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily. And live on Inspiration FM 105.9. 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Be a part of this program. Don't miss it. Okay, we're back. It's the second part. And today is the eighth day since we set sail with 30 Days of Glory 2020. Um, it's either the eighth day or the beginning of the second week, whichever right. one you like. That's and right. as you heard there in the commercial, we're here every today, 11 until 1, and every Monday to Saturday um, from um, 6 until 8. And also do remember that um, this goes all around the world. I'm excited to welcome you. Good afternoon from Uyo, Nigeria, the global headquarters of Power City International. And my name is Michael. Michael Bush. I'm joined by the man who makes um, things happen, the man that God is using massively and mightily, and I'm excited to welcome him, the Reverend Dr. Abel Damina is in the building. Mr. Bush, Papa. so glad to have you so here. Nice. What so a nice. Blessing. Here. What so a blessing. Nice. Thank Papa, you. Papa, something new that we're doing. Yes. We're doing something new. Yes. Um, 30 Days of Glory now would have a quiz to so be um, open every week. For this week, the transgression of sin, is it from Moses? Because he gave the law, true or false, in a few words, you have to explain that and send your answers to 30 days of glory at gmail.com. The transgression of sin, is it from Moses because he gave the law, true or false? Just email your answers, very short, to 30 days of glory at gmail.com. We're expecting that and I can also hint you as uh, uncle here that there is a little prize here and there that you would love. Okay, Papa, welcome again. Thank you, Mr. Bush. What Papa, a joy. Papa, where does this, this energy come from? You know, I, I sit here, I watch you, and um, I don't know. Where does the energy come from? It comes from the passion of the assignment. Oh, the passion of the assignment. Yes. Okay. Jesus calls it the zeal of my father's house. Okay, Papa, talking about passion... Um, the, the, the opening that has been chosen for me by my producer, Pastor I.J. Aquera, is a lengthy one. Okay. So I'm going to take it. I wait for you to give answers. Then we'll continue. It's a page long entry. Okay. And I'm going to take it. It comes from a guy, Alex Dianga. It doesn't seem to be writing from Nigeria. It says, Dear Seven of God, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I've seen a short clip posted on WhatsApp where you, or in which you address the subject of the Holy Communion. It's a very short clip that may have been extracted from a longer message. That clip may not give the entire, entire context of what you are trying to convey. However, from the clip alone, one gets the picture that you are saying, that what you are saying does not represent the truth about the Holy Communion. Holy Communion and Passover are two different things. Holy Communion was done during Passover because Christ was uh, crucified, before Christ was crucified, and Christ commanded us to continue doing it in his remembrance. We are not to observe the Passover, but to take the Holy Communion. The word communion simply means fellowship. The disciples had a holy, a holy fellowship of eating together as they remember the Lord's um, death. It's also called Eucharist in Latin. Do you agree to that point? No, I think he's quoting the Bible out of context. First of all, your submissions are not scriptural because there's no such word as Holy Communion in the Bible. It does not exist anywhere. What we have in the Bible is the Passover, which was a feast of the Jews, which Moses gave to the Jews as his way of communicating to them of what Christ was going to do in his death, burial, and resurrection. And that is why when Jesus came in the book of Luke, he did one with them and he told them, I will no more eat this with you guys, this, until that day in my father's kingdom. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he ate it with them by way of teaching for 40 days. Now the disciples never practiced holy communion. What you have there is the breaking of bread. The breaking of bread is what we call love feast. And then they also had supper. The Lord's supper is not the Passover. And it's not the communion. The Lord's supper is dinner. They ate dinner. They had a, a, they had a culture of coming together to eat dinner or to have a love feast. But the Passover ended in the book of Luke. When brother Paul was talking about it in the book of Corinth, he was talking to the Corinthian church as carnal men in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 because the Bible is contextual. He said, I could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal because there are divisions among you. So based on that, he began to talk to them concerning, you know, love and forgiveness and walking in love. And then he said to them, Christ, our Passover. 
So our Passover is no more a feast. Our Passover is a person. His name is Christ Jesus. However, I will help you because I did an extensive two-hour teaching on that. And we don't have time to get into all the technicalities of the exegesis on that. So I recommend for you discerning the lost body, part one and two, to give you a comprehensive picture. But it was not an endorsement because the Holy Communion is not in the New Testament. It's not in the Bible. It was rebranded or it was coined, coined by, you know, by, I don't want to call names now, for Christian practice. But it is not a scriptural teaching. However, today, our communion with Christ is spiritual. When we receive his word, we're eating his body and we're drinking his blood through the teaching of his word. That's why Jesus said, the words that I now speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Papa, I just do justice to Alex Dianga by taking the closing comments that he makes. Some, some believe that the bread and wine actually become Christ's body, physical body and blood. It's not possible. Okay. Others believe that the bread and wine remain unchanged, but that Christ is spiritually and uniquely present with the bread and wine. Jesus lives on the inside of the believer, not in bread and wine. Still, others believe that the bread and wine symbolize Christ's body and blood. Well, we don't work with symbols. We work with the reality. Why do you need symbols when the real deal is here? But Papa, I'm wondering what you say to him in his closing um, comments. He took a shot. says, for these very reasons, I humbly submit that your comments on the Holy Communion on that clip may mislead the flock of Jesus. As such, I request humbly that you correct that impression. Well, the, the, the short clips that are always given for genuine and sincere and serious people always have reference. It's always put there. It is an excerpt from and the details are given and how to order for the complete message is also given there. So people that are serious and really want to learn will always call our office and get the complete notes and go through the entire teaching. And that's the way to go. Papa, let's go to Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates where Mbu Habet reminds me of a journalist back in time in the Republic of Cameroon, Bo Habet. He says, when a person who is born again dies, what happens next to his spirit? He, he is in Christ. Brother Paul says to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. So he's in Christ right now. And when he dies, he's still in Christ. It's just that his body has shut down and his body goes back into the grave. But the real man is in Christ. This writer doesn't tell us who he is, but he, he, tell, he remembers to tell us that he's writing from Uyo, Nigeria, exactly where we are. So I'll take that. He says, Papa, a believer who dishonored a pastor by leaving his church for another, what advice can you give to him in order to make things straight? By the way, we had already answered this, but just for emphasis. To make things straight, well, go back to your pastor and thank him for all he has done for you, all you have enjoyed while you were with him. And if possible, give him an offering and appreciate him and tell him you have just moved on because you have other convictions, but it does not stop you fellowshipping with them whenever you have the time. And that's it. Just, you know, be as nice as possible. Okay, John Okboku doesn't tell us again where he's writing from, but leaves us a longish one. I'll just um, try to um, take it very brief. Um, he, he's concerned about the 1,000-year reign of Jesus on this particular earth, whether it's physical or spiritual. It's spiritual. It's, that's what you receive when you come into Christ. You begin to reign in life. Romans chapter 5, verse 17, 18, and 19. Okay, and uh, it says throughout the Bible, sin, law, sin, I, first, then righteousness, grace, and Zion. Likewise, it's time for us to enter a promised land or reign or dominion on earth after sin and law had fooled us before the new heaven. Please clearly explain your stand. It's already in Christ. It's not my stand. It's a Bible stand. You have come to Mount Zion, Hebrews 11, 12. I mean, Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. You have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the spirits of just men made perfect. You have come to Jesus, the mediator of the New Testament. So we're already in Zion. We're already in the New Jerusalem. We're already in Christ. We're already reigning with Christ. That's what we have. That's our reality that was communicated metaphorically, you know, by the prophets and by uh, Revelation, the Revelation of John. An interesting entry next sent by God's portion, Mark, who tells us he's writing from Ika, Nigeria. And if you're in Akwai Boom, there's a tendency for you to begin to wonder where that is. That's right here in Akwai Boom State. It says, Papa, please, is it right to compulsorily record and monitor tithes paid by church members as practiced in many churches? Well, I, first of all, it's even right to pay tithes. We don't pay tithes. We give generously. Recording tithes is legalism. It's legalistic because you don't force people to give. People give cheerfully. The one God loves is a cheerful giver. So when you start recording tithes and monitoring people, you have brought them back under the weight of the law and it doesn't have any blessing. Pulane is in Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm excited to take up this entry, Papa, he goes Except on Except the recording is for accountability. 
Okay. Because some churches, you know, it depends on the laws of the land. There are in some countries where you must have accounts of everything mm. people give. Therefore, you need a record. If it's for accountability, it's in order. That's honest. But if it's for manipulating people, that's not right. Okay. So Kulane is in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, has uh, so much um, Thanksgiving to give. Yes. But my question is about rapture. Papa, I heard one pastor saying that after rapture, there will be years of tribulation for non-believers here on earth. But believers will be in heaven celebrating the wedding for seven years. Then after tribulation, there will be judgment for the unbelievers. Papa, can you please explain what is tribulation? And for seven years, where does the Bible make mention of the matter? Thank you. Well, that is not Bible. That's not accurate Bible teaching. And most of the people who teach that are those who have great loyalty to Judaism. They use Israel as a marker to calculate end time events. Once you leave Jesus in the Bible, you have already gone to another religion like I taught this morning. You've got to stay with Christ. And if you stay with Christ, you will find out that the rapture, which is what the Bible calls the resurrection, will be the end of the world. The resurrection will be the end of the world. Persecution is already on. A lot of Christians are already being persecuted for their faith. In the north, Boko Haram is persecution for Christianity. Churches are being burnt down, pulled down. Christians are being killed. That's persecution already going on. So it's not like there's going to be another. No, it's already on right now. An antichrist is already around, which is an opposition to the message of Christ being a man or being God. All that is already on. And that's why the resurrection of the church is the end of the world. Polane is still in Joburg, South Africa. Papa, I have a friend who left Christianity because she says Jesus is European and Europeans came to Africa and maltreated black people. So because of that, she has decided to follow African religion, which is um, worship of ancestors. Papa, how can I help my friend to come out of this deception? She doesn't want to hear anything about Jesus anymore. Pray for her. Just pray for her and then try as much as possible to keep sharing with her. Share with her. Make her see that African religion and all of them, whatever it is, all of them are a form that has no power. The real power is in the fact that Jesus died, he was buried. On the third day, he rose again and offers you eternal salvation and eternal life. From Samuel in Keduna, Nigeria, the word translated sons of God in Genesis 6, 2 to 4, and Job 1, 5, Job 2, 1, Job 3, 8, 7. Does it refer to angels? If yes, Papa, how, does, uh, how do I reconcile the fact with the statement made by Jesus in Matthew 22, 28 to 30, uh, where 30 says, but as the angels of God in heaven? Well, again, angels of God in heaven means angels of God in the immaterial. Heaven is immaterial. Now, sons of God, some of them in the Old Testament was actually making reference to angels. Again, there is no word of scripture that has an omnibus application. So every time you see a word, you have to read within the context to understand what the context was referring to as sons of God in that context. Because in other contexts, sons of God means judges. In, some, in other contexts, it means angels. So depending on what is made, made reference to within that context. Okay, Uchenna in Abba. Please, sir, can Satan and his agents hijack and prevent God's plan and purpose? If yes, what do we do? How is that possible? Where, is, where do angels and demons have the authority? To hijack God's purpose. God's purpose is a man. His name is Jesus. They can't hijack Jesus. They can't stop Jesus. The reason why you're thinking like that is because maybe you've been taught purpose outside God by motivational speakers. God's purpose is a person. His name is Jesus. God's plan is a person. His name is Jesus. God's will is a person. His name is Jesus. God's destiny is a person. His name is Jesus. The moment you come into Christ, you have come into your destiny, you have come into your purpose, you have come into the plan and the will of God for your life. The next thing to do is to begin to grow in the knowledge of that purpose, plan, and design of God in Jesus. And then you begin to fulfill that plan by living out the realities of what Christ has done. That's what it is. Professor Ima Bongakban, Uyo House Church, number 12, Fatai Street. I guess that's right here in Uyo. Right, Papa, please, some faith preachers sometimes tell donors that when they give an offering, they should claim a specific benefit to get a blessing in return. Is that biblical? God is not a contractor. God is not a contractor that you will be mobilizing him and uh, trying to cajole him to do things for you. He did things for you before you even know who you were. He blessed you with everything in Christ before you even know who you were. So if any preacher is telling you to give money and then claim something, he's just trying to reduce the word of God into a manipulative scheme. God is not like that. God blesses you. He makes his son to shine on the good and on the bad. He gives his blessings to the thankful and the unthankful, irrespective and independent of them. Listen, God's gift takes on the character of God. 
God is a good God and he blesses his people because of what he has done in Christ Jesus. So there's no point claiming and naming it. You can receive from God without giving an offering. Your offering is only given in acknowledgement of what God has already done. Papa, let's go to Abuja next where Samson is waiting for us. Samson writes, Papa, please can you explain Isaiah chapter 57 verse 1 which says the righteous perish, the righteous perish and no man lay it to heart and merciful men are taken away none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Well, when you hear righteous in the Old Testament, you have to find out what, what is the original meaning of the word righteous because sometimes when you hear the word righteous, it means people that are morally upright, people that are good. It doesn't mean born again. It doesn't mean people that have God. It just means people that are upright in dealings with each other. Sometimes that's, they are the ones that are called righteous in the Old Testament. So again, you need to find out what it implied within that context. Next, Papa, we go to Oshun where Timothy is waiting. He says, what does the book of Revelation mean to Christians? The book of Revelation means to Christians the revelation of Jesus. Because chapter 1 verse 1 says the revelation of Jesus. So what you should look for in that book is Jesus. Anything else you're looking for, you will end up in the bush like I taught in the course of preaching. Olivia is in South Africa and says, I want to ask Papa if I have a problem, a spiritual problem that is, everyone I help turns against me. Why? And what can I do to change that? It's not a problem. You don't have a spiritual problem. It's just the way humanity is. Human beings are like that. So even you yourself, you may be like that sometimes. It's just that you're not aware of it. It's what happens among men. Sometimes you're good to somebody you appreciate. Sometimes you're good to somebody he doesn't even think what you did was good enough. So he doesn't appreciate it. It's still part of humanity. It's not because you have a spiritual problem. If anybody tells you that he wants to brainwash you and make a mess of you, it's what the Bible says, no temptation has taken you, but such as is common is within the activities of men. And if people appreciate you, it's good. If they don't appreciate you, don't allow people's re responses to you change who you are. Keep doing good and keep being good. Next door, Abba Uchenna, please, sir, what is your view on the circumcision of our male children eight days after birth? You are not a Jew outwardly. It is Jewish people outwardly that circumcise on the eighth day. However, for health reasons, for health reasons, it is advisable that male children be circumcised. It has no spiritual implication, whether you circumcise them or not. Pastor Samuel Abia is writing to us from QIC, Abaka Kwaibum says, says, all praise to God for the good work that is done through Dr. Damina. His teachings have inspired me to write a book entitled, You Shall Know the Truth. These are my questions. Does Holy Communion give the forgiveness of sin? It doesn't have any spiritual relevance. We just thought on that. I recommend you to order for discerning the lost body part one and two from our office and patiently follow the exegesis. You will discover it has no spiritual relevance. Papa, what does it really mean to believe in Jesus? Believe in Jesus means to believe in his sacrificial work, to believe that he died on your behalf, he was buried on your behalf, he rose again on your behalf. Faith in that which he has done is what gets you saved or born again. So again, believing in Jesus means to believe in his sacrificial work. The QIC pastor, Samuel Abias, last question, um, says, since salvation is eternal, if a believer falls and joins a cult, for instance, is he still saved? It's possible he was never a believer. Don't forget there are false converts and there are false brethren. But a genuine believer in Jesus who understood what it means to receive Christ has no attraction in cultism because what he has in Christ is superior to what cultism offers. Udeme Inuyo has, uh, I hope he's not a medical doctor, I'm struggling with the handwriting, says, Good afternoon, Papa. Many thanks for your labor in word and doctrine. The epistle teaches that we have one mediator between God and man. That is the man, Jesus Christ. Um, and goes on to say, it is obvious that your strength for saying that our God is a man is based on the aforementioned verse of the epistle. Jesus does not need to remain a man for a sacrifice to remain effective, just as he doesn't need to die again to deal with the sins of man. My question then is, can't God decide to change anything or his original form, which he strips, he stripped himself of, as uh, Paul mentioned in Philippians? Bless you, sir. Please, sir, what is Jesus? Okay, I think that is the first one from Udeme. What you just did was to force your personal opinion into the scriptures. That's what you did. It's called incidences, and that is adulteration of the scriptures. 
we stay within the context of the scriptures. You don't add yours. You let the scriptures talk to you. The scripture tells us that Jesus is a man till today. And he will be a man until all is over. Now, I will advise you to follow the teaching tomorrow because I'm going to still continue teaching on Jesus the man with a plethora of scriptures all through the New Testament to unveil that Jesus remains a man until everything is over with this life. Bro, Savior Inuyo, please, sir, why is Jesus, so why does Jesus, or why did Jesus need to offer himself as eternal spirit unto God, according to Hebrews 9? Because he became sin. So since he became sin on his resurrection, he had to offer himself as an eternal spirit, and that is the only way he could now live in you, who is the beneficiary of what he did. He couldn't live in you as a man. So he came to live in you as spirit. So the person in you today is the Holy Spirit. Don't forget, tomorrow I'm going to teach on that. Don't push me ahead of my schedule. Patrick A.T., in you still, if we are believers in Christ, why is the doctrine of the Holy Trinity contradictory? Well, it is contradictory in your mind because you have not read the Bible well. If you read the Bible well, you will find out that there are no contradictions in the Bible. The contradictions exist in your understanding. So my advice, follow the teachings as I keep teaching carefully and just keep following. Eventually, this truth will dawn on you. Let me tell you the truth. If you rush studying the Bible, you will end up being misled. You must be patient. It takes years and years of studying the same thing to arrive at a place of understanding. Moreover, Mr. Bush, you see the Bible is written. The reason why it is written is so that it cannot be changed. It has consistency. That's why it is written. So we keep studying until we arrive at a place of full understanding. So my advice, keep following. There's no contradiction in the Bible. For our radio audience and indeed the television people, just know that in the next seven minutes or thereabouts, I'll be taking telephone calls. And that number is plus 234-086-800-9939. Remember, plus 234 if you're calling from outside the country. 800-9939. And uh, for SMSs, 708 Radio audience, SMS, SMS 708 plus 234. Anyhow, Joseph Ahunisi Ayodele is in Montreal, Canada. I'm one of your sons, Papa. I've been following your teachings on Facebook for about two and a half years now. I wake up and sleep with your teachings, and I've never missed any teaching of yours. Thank you for changing my spiritual life. More and more blessings to you. My question is on Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 to 20. Does it have any spiritual significance, or was it not the reason Abraham gave Melchizedek, right? Well, Abraham gave to Melchizedek, it was just, um, it, it, Melchizedek, there was a typology, you know, a type and shadow of the priesthood of Jesus, the priesthood of Jesus in physical terms. That's why Abraham gave to Melchizedek. That's why Jesus today is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And what that simply means is that Jesus is a substance of the shadow that Melchizedek, you know, um, uh, figuratively uh, exemplified in the Old Testament. That's all it means. Nothing more. Stephen, in Ogun State, Papa, grace, grace abounds unto you, sir. I understand from your teachings that all blessings from God are non-material. Can we include the fruit of the womb to this list, knowing that even unbelievers can have children? Does God answer believers' prayers for the fruit of the womb? The blessings of God does not include the fruit of the womb in that context. The blessings of God, it's in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, enumerated. Blessed with all spiritual blessings. And then he told you, chosen before the foundation of the world. Your sins are forgiven. You are accepted in the beloved. You are holy and without blame before him in love. Those are the blessings, righteousness and all that. Fruit of the womb, however, is not a spiritual blessing. It's just part of God's goodness given to men for the purpose of procreation. And everybody has the capacity to do that. You don't have to have Christ to have children. From Kogi State, an anonymous entry. And I think I didn't yeah. answer his second question, did I? Okay, um, the second question Sorry. would be, would be um, um, Papa, I think you took that. Okay. Um, okay. What about, um, does God answer believers' um, prayers for the fruit of the womb? Oh, believers' prayers for the fruit of the womb? Well, this is the way it is. God can give you a miracle. That's what it is. You can have a miracle. And sometimes, if you are waiting for a miracle and it's taking long, there's no sin in going to the doctors for IVF. There's no sin in going to adopt a child. There's no sin in any of those. 
it's just your religious mind that makes you think if you go for adoption it is not nice or if you go to ivf it's not nice it's, it's just like in the days when we got born again newly they said if a girl puts a uh, uh, cutex on her fingers she's telling god that god didn't do a good job okay. she wants to help god then you can as well walk naked don't wear clothes because god did a good job so all of those are just religious mentalities if you need a child and you're not able to have a child naturally go see a doctor Go through science. Science is God's wisdom. Science and God works together in helping mankind. And let me also add, just as we are, you know, before I hand over to Mr. Bush, on this fruit of the womb, because this has been a very serious religious lacuna, you know, in our time. And, you know, it's like a woman goes to the hospital for delivery and the doctor says, your child is too big, he can't come, come out naturally. Right. Let's do uh, CS. And many women think if I do CS, I'm not a Hebrew woman. There's nothing like Hebrew woman. It's a mutos. It does not exist in the Bible. Those Hebrew women only lied. That thing came out of a lie. They were lying because they didn't want to be killed. That's why they say Hebrew women deliver us fast. But it's nothing like that. If you read the Bible, it was just a lie. If you need a CS, go and do a CS. Save your wife's life and save the baby's life. There's nothing wrong with that and there's no sin in that. However, you can also believe God for natural delivery. But if it's going to endanger the baby and the mother, you better go the route of CS and have your child alive and have your wife alive. That's what matters. This is very important. Thank you, Papa. Kogi State next. And yeah, this one is anonymous, but we'll take them. Working with God and working for God, Papa, what's the difference? Working with God means you're born of God, you're living in God, you're growing in the knowledge of God. Working for God means you have decided out of that knowledge you've grown into to use what you know to serve God. That's what it is. The means. second question is, how can one hear from God? You hear from God just like you hear from your mother, your father, your brothers. If people who, who are talking to you from external, you can hear and know them. Hearing from God who lives inside you should not be a problem. So this is the way to go. As you begin to grow in the knowledge of the word of God, you grow in the knowledge of the word of God. You have your senses sharpened to be able to know when God has spoken to you and when it is not God speaking to you. It's a product of growth in the word of God. His last question, I was told, Papa, that after we all pass away from this earth, we will then know the new meaning of Christ. Please kindly throw more light on this. I think the person who taught you should go and ask. <laughs> should go and throw <laughs> more light. not taught that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Papa, I, I just need to say that in 60 seconds we'll be taking phone calls. Okay. But before we get there, in Lagos, young Francis says, what happened to Esau and his descendants? What happened to Esau? Again, that's not the message of the Bible, you know. The message of the Bible is Christ, and I, I, I stay with Christ, and I just function with Christ. So whatever happens to Esau and his descendants is irrelevant to the message of the scriptures. Okay, I hear that the callers are already here, so I have no choice. I said at the quarter to the top of the hour, take them, so I can take my first caller. Hello, thank you for joining us. Where are you calling from? Yes, I'm Robert Kelly. Can you just shift a little from your TV set or radio set? Just shift a little so you don't cause commotion in the house of God. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to take it. I don't know where you can talk about the man of good sense. I'm going to have to be part of the man of Okay, cloud of witness. He's asking about cloud of witness in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. The cloud of witness is where in that scripture talks about the the believers who died in faith, the Old Testament saints, they are the cloud of witnesses. But believers too in Christ Jesus are part of the cloud. Cloud means, you know, uh, righteous people. Righteous, the spirits of just men, the cloud. People who are witnesses of Christ. So yes, believers are in a sense. Another caller. Hello, welcome to a program. Your name, where are you calling from? Hello. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. God bless you. Bless, bless you. you too. Yeah, I'm calling from here. Hello, sir. Yes, go ahead. Um, okay, okay. Thank God for what God is doing for the time that I'm talking about. And the husband. Are you still there? 
the okay, net, the I, net I don't net. know whether the producer, producer, I think that we should also have a producer. It will be necessary for some special phone specialists to be at the yep. background and make sure they can get some of those questions for us yep. when they don't come through. Yep. You'll be in a quiet room while we're still waiting for the next caller, says um, Dr. Ebel Damina. My question is, why is materialism gospel bad? Because pastors also quote from the Bible. Thank you. It is like a thought today. You can quote the Bible and use it for occultism. You can quote the Bible and use it to cheat somebody. You can quote the Bible for anything. Because the Bible is not just a book. Therefore, it must be read in the light of Christ. And if you read the Bible in the light of Christ, you'll find out that the message is not materialism. The message is salvation through faith, which is in Christ. Another caller. Thank you for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Okay, I'm calling from... I'm in You're calling from where? Lagos. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Actually, our papa folk don't get angry. But angry is not And God is not a God that supports you. But there was a few days in the garden. When you enter the city, and you get the folk in the garden and sell it. But that was a big anger. Be angry. Be angry and Okay. Um, I understand what he's saying. Okay. Jesus was not angry. He was zealous. The Bible says, the zeal of my father's house has consumed me. So that was an action that was motivated by zeal that his father's house should not be used for selling and buying. It should be a house of prayer. It was zeal, not anger. Now, what does the Bible mean by be angry and sin not? It was Brother Paul saying that you should be angry. I mean, when people do wrong, there's nothing wrong in expressing your displeasure. That's actually what it means. Expressing displeasure, not anger as in anger, but displeasure for wrongdoing. Another caller. Thank you for joining us. Your name, where are you calling from? Your name, where are you calling from? Go ahead. Are you there? Just go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, Papa, there's this question. You be from Akwaibum. You know, I just asked this first question a moment ago. There's a second question that you already answered the other day, but my producer wants us to take this again. Some years ago, you were a radical prosperity preacher. What caused the change and why is the prosperity message bad today? Like I said, the Bible has only one message, Christ. You can preach anything you want to preach out of it, but if it is not Christ, you're not preaching the Bible. So what, what happened to me? I just discovered I wasn't preaching the right thing. It wasn't deliberate. It wasn't intentional. I was not trying to be very funny. It was just the truth. That's all I knew. But when I came into the light of the truth of Christ, I made my transition, and I'm glad today for it. So what's wrong with the materialistic gospel? It produces greed. It produces, it produces you know, greed in people. It makes people discontented, and it makes people think of other ways of trying to get money. Now listen, in Christ Jesus, you are not accepted because you have money. You are accepted because of Jesus. That's the difference. And that's why we must stay with the gospel, which is the message of Christ. My last caller. Hello. Hello. It's the whole bag. You know, there have to be some delays and all of yeah. that. Are you there now? Hello. Yeah. Yes. Where are you calling from? Can, can you just move away? Can you, you need to move away from the TV set or the... The radio set. Okay, thank you. Your name, where you calling from? Okay, I'm Salonte Ogun, calling from Okobo. Go ahead. Okay, I, the first service, I want to thank Papa for what you do. The first service was so awesome. Well, when you talk about, um, um, uh, when you explain from the scripture and you made a statement, he said we should understand ourselves as believers in the light of what Jesus has done, the, the, the words of us, of our redemption, which is the blood of Jesus, or Jesus himself. So that also instructs me that even in the way we did this, other believers, that you don't see a believer in the light, or even if you are a friend with your brother, or your sister, or your father, or your wife, you should look at the person of very true you're preaching right man that's what the bible says henceforth 
We know no man after the flesh, you see. So that's right, spot on. Papa is your son. Why will he not preach right? <laughs> <laughs> He's been listening to you all his life. Yeah. Okay, Papa, the next um, respondent, the next person to send us a message, um, seems angry. And I'm so angry that he has forgotten his name, even to tell us who he's writing. He says, he, he, he screams, I don't get it. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together and turning over, shall men give unto you. Why then are we saying we get nothing in return? <laughs> I, can, I can identify with your anger, man. I preach prosperity more than you can imagine. When I preach prosperity, even Satan used to give me money. <laughs> Luke, chapter, <laughs> Luke chapter 6 verse 37 is where you're quoting from. Let me help you a bit. Look at it. Let me read the pretext and the post-text so you can understand. Now he says in verse 30, 30, 35, But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Do good and lend. This is Jesus talking. Hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And you shall be called the children of the highest. For God is kind unto the thankful and to the evil. Be therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Follow the reading. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. That's the way God functions. Now look at verse, verse 38. Give and it shall be given. That's man's level. Man's level begins from uh, being merciful. I mean, it begins from judge not and you shall not be judged. God's level is be therefore merciful as your father. Now man's level is do I do. Condemn not, you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. Give and it shall be given. Good measure, present, shaking together, running over, shall men, not God, men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you make with all, it shall be measured to you again. So what Jesus was doing is a contrast. The book of Luke is a book of contrast that Luke the doctor wrote to Theophilus. And he was arguing in a very intelligent way using contracts to communicate. So first of all, he talks about the way God relates with man. He relates with man not based on man. Then he now shows you the way man relates with man. Man relates with man based on man. You give me, I give you. You don't give me, I, give, I don't give you. God, whether you give or you don't give, he blesses you because that is his nature. So that book was a book of contrast. It was not a book of reward for giving to God. Moreover, what reward do you need? God already blessed you before you give. The first giver is God. Your giving is in response to what God has already done. The energy to go to work, the favor to get work, the intelligence to learn and graduate and be intelligent as you are, God gave you without giving him anything. So anyways, when you make money, you make money from the blessing of God in your life by giving you natural abilities. Now, when you give to God, you're only responding to what God already has done in your life. That's what it is. Five minutes or less before we say our bye-byes and prepare for day nine tomorrow. And um, Sophie is in Joss, and I, I love what she says. She says, is, okay, is it okay, Papa, for a girl in her 20s to marry a man who is 40, plus he's already married and has a family? No, it's not right. It's not right at all. Why will a fresh, brand new girl like you be looking for a tokumbo, a man that is already married with children and everything, and you fresh, you want to marry somebody? who is almost the age of being a father to you, there are going to be a lot of issues. First of all, it's not right. Secondly, even in, if the guy was a single guy, 20 years difference is big. Your mental development will not be the same. Your worldview will not be the same. The way you respond to things will not be the same. And once there is differences in those areas, it will cause friction in the marriage in a great, to a great extent. I can tell you that. You know, so my advice... Trust God for a fresh young man. Prepare yourself and wait. And just serve God sincerely and be happy with Jesus. One beautiful, handsome brother will marry you and two of you will be happy. And you build a family together. Pastor Ethan Estefanos is writing from Jalingo, Taraba State. Papa, I have been blessed greatly by your teachings over the years from a distance. I was privileged to sit directly under your ministration last year at Gombe. Please, Papa, can you shed more light on your statement that heaven is not a place but a person? Heaven is not a place but a person. But again, remember, heaven is immaterial. Immaterial. The reason why I always say that is because people are always thinking of a planet somewhere. That's why I take time to disabuse your mind so you can see in the light of Christ. Heaven is an immaterial realm or if you like. 
place or if you like an atmosphere but not like a physical place but immaterial and Jesus makes heaven heaven. Okay, let's go now to Port Harcourt where Opubo is waiting. Papa, what are these things concerning Christ from Genesis to Malachi to John 5.39? The sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Luke 24, 25, 26, 27. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them the things concerning him. He said, what are those things? The sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10, 11, and 12. And uh, I mean, First Corinthians 1. Uh, First Corinthians chapter, chapter, chapter 1, verse 9, 10, 11. And then First Peter chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. All of those are references that shows you that the message of the Bible are the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Papa, in two minutes, we should be saying bye-byes. This um, anonymous entry, sir, when the case of life hits a believer and he, he or she falls into depression and ultimately commits suicide, does that believer go to heaven? Uh, suicide is not commended, but if a brother commits suicide who is really born again, he goes to heaven straight. Something committed suicide and murder and something is in heaven today. Because you are not saved based on your conduct, you are saved based on your faith in Christ. When bad things happen to believers, naturally we question the existence of God, or we have inner doubts. How do we get over this? You get over that by learning and teaching. When you come to where you know that let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. James 1, 13 to 18. Let no man say when I'm tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted of evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own loss and enticed. And when loss has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, neither a shadow of turning. When you come to that place of knowledge, you will no more be questioning God. I have a series that will help you. Why what, finding God in the midst of evil? Finding God in the midst of evil. You can order for it. Know it the misunderstood God. Finding God in the midst of evil. I think it's about five, six, seven hours of teaching. It will sort you out completely. Papa, we must go now. Lebongang bin Botswana should be the last one for today. Thank you, Dr. Damina, for sharing grace with the entire world. Please shed light on Romans 11, verses, uh, verse 26, about all Israel being saved. Again, it was Paul's mode of interpreting God's plan for the salvation of all men using Israel as a pattern of communication. It was, it was a figure of speech. Someone testing from Barcelona, I think I can just squeeze this in. It's very important. So I've heard people pray in the name of their pastor. Is that right? It's witchcraft and it's, it's idol worship. Your pastor didn't die for you. Your pastor, you and your pastor are the same. The only thing that makes him different is that he has been graced to pastor you finish. So if you're praying in the name of your pastor, you're in idol worship. And let me add this. When the words of your pastor weigh more than your Bible, you're an idol worshiper. Because the word of, your, of God in the scriptures should be superior to anything. So prayer is in the name of Jesus, not in the name of your pastor or your prophet or any man. None of them died for you. Jesus alone died for you. And there is only one name that is given among men. And God has highly exalted that name. And that name is the name of Jesus. So don't get involved into idol worship. Pastor I.J. Quere and um, I.J. Quere and the rest of the team who made um, possible, who have continued to make this possible, I'd like to thank you, all the cameramen, all the studio guys, everyone here at the international headquarters of Power City International. This is Michael Bush. Thank you for listening today and asking you to tune in tomorrow. Papa, time to go. Hey, Mr. Bush, thank you, man. You're so amazing. We love and appreciate you. Tomorrow evening, 6 to 8, is going to be brutal as we continue our teaching on Christ the man. And tomorrow afternoon, 1 to 3 o'clock, the broadcast will be rebroadcasted of today's teaching and today's question and answers. And in another, in another one minute, we'll be live on XLFM for those in Aquaibom. Just switch over to XLFM so you can enjoy yesterday's service and question and answers and get more people to hook, hook into that broadcast. And then today, we'll be live again on Inspiration at 8 to 9 p.m. And uh, like I said, we don't have a service tonight. We continue tomorrow evening. We love you guys, all our campuses and pastors and house centers. We love every one of you. Looking forward to connecting again tomorrow. Don't forget social media people, spread the news. Get more people on, 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 you know, on board for tomorrow's broadcast. And until we come your get, again your way tomorrow, enjoy Christ and be blessed. Amen. Goodbye from you. Amen.
Amen. Jesus is the exclusive custodian. Jesus is the sole carrier. Jesus is the perfect imprint, the pleroma, the corporate headquarters of the Godhead. Jesus is the executive carrier of the Father. So if you don't know Jesus, you don't know the Father. You can never know the Father outside of Christ. Church in the air and church online. So Join Dr. Abel and Rachel Damien as he brings you sound church. Bible study through the month of July and 30 days of glory 2020. Exegetically examining the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Salvation in Christ. Date from 5th of July to 2nd of August 2020. Time 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. from Mondays to Saturdays, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Sundays. Hook up live on our Facebook and YouTube page and also live on Kingdom Life Network TV, on my TV or Strong Decoder and live on Comfort FM Uyo by 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mondays to Saturdays and 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Sunday. Also listen to a rebroadcast of the services daily on XLFM 106.9 Uyo. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily and live on Inspiration FM 105.9 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. daily. Be a part of this program. Don't miss it.